Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and in a recent video, I moved my home networking to a different part of the house. This was done in part to give me more room for more network equipment and servers, but adding everything I want to my setup means things might get very hectic and unorganized very quickly. Now, none of this equipment is very big or designed to be mounted on a full-size server rack, so it doesn't make any sense for me to pick one of those up, but lucky for me, a smaller server rack form factor, the 10-inch rack, is quickly gaining popularity, and after going down the YouTube rabbit hole of people building out and using 10-inch racks, I decided this would be the perfect option for me and my setup. So in today's video, I'm going to be assembling a mini rack and filling it out with a combination of 3D printed mounts I found online and some I designed myself. The rack I'm going to be assembling and building in is the DeskPy RackMate T1, which is probably the most popular mini rack available today, and while DeskPy did send it out for this video, I'll be giving my honest thoughts on it. And it's also important to note it's not the only option on the market in this form factor, and there's even fully 3D printed options available that I'll talk about later. This is the 8UT1, which comes flat packed and is pretty straightforward to put together. It uses a combination of aluminum for the frame, along with acrylic panels and steel accessories. For 120 bucks, you get the rack itself, along with a couple of shelves, blank panels, and even a couple of adapter boards for Raspberry Pis. There's this version, along with a smaller version, which these two can actually be combined with screws, and there's also a standalone 12U version that you can also get. Now, I will be using 3D printing to mount all of my hardware, but it's important to note that doing this is far from required. You can fit a ton of hardware on a rack like this just using the included accessories and other off-the-shelf mounts, especially if you're willing to get a little creative. A really good example of this is showcased in this video by Raid Owl, where he did an amazing job showing all the stuff you can fit in this form factor, even just using off-the-shelf mounts. With that being said, all of these super clean 3D printed buildouts I've seen online definitely got me excited on building out my own rack with a bunch of custom mounts. What's cool about this option is many of the popular pieces of home lab and network equipment already have designs online for free and the library of compatible mounts is growing every single day. To print out all these parts, I'm going to be using my X1C from the sponsor of today's video, Bamboo Labs. This printer has been absolutely amazing, having no trouble printing all the parts necessary for this project in ABS, which is a material a lot of printers struggle with. Bamboo Labs makes printers that just work. Setup is extremely quick and easy, it does all the calibration and leveling itself, and in the hundreds of hours I've ran this machine, I've only had two or three failed prints. These are printers for people who want to use 3D printing as a tool to help bring their ideas to life more than a hobby where you'll be tinkering with the machine all the time. I have the X1C with the AMS system, which can be used for printing with multiple materials or colors in a single print, but for me, I love it as it allows me to easily switch between material types without having to load and unload filament every single time. So I'll usually have a mix of materials like ABS, PLA, and PETG all ready to go loaded up in the AMS. Now the X1C is definitely one of Bamboo Lab's more high-end printers, but they have options like the A1 and A1 Mini which are great entry points into the world of 3D printing, and if you don't care about printing in materials like ABS or ASA, then the A1 is an awesome option bringing you all the Bamboo Lab's quality of life features like auto bed leveling at a more affordable price. Thanks again to Bamboo Labs for sponsoring this video, and if you're interested in picking up one of their printers, I'll have them linked in the description down below. So now that you have a basic understanding of what this project is all about, let's start filling out the rack. The top two slots are going to be for something I'll talk about later, so let's skip those for now. For slot number three, I decided to put my main switch, which is this Giga Plus 10 port one I've been using for almost a year now, and has been working fine in that time. Now unfortunately, there's not any mounts for this available online, so I took a blink one 1U cover plate into Fusion 360 and used my very basic CAD skills to design and print this mount here. The first attempt did end up in what has been only my second or third failed print in hundreds of hours with the X1C, having this slight layer shift, but it wasn't the end of the world because I realized I needed to include an opening for the side vents, which I added and printed in version 2. This isn't perfect, but it's good enough for now. In a future version 3, I'll probably tighten up the tolerances a bit, add a pass through for the power cable, and we'll utilize the grounding screw in the back as a way of more securely attaching the switch to the mount. But again, this version 2 is fine for now, so I loaded it in and attached it with the included screws and washers. And it was definitely cool seeing the first piece of hardware go into the rack. Below this, I wanted to add a 3D printed keystone patch panel. Luckily, there are a ton of options for these online 
and I'll link the one I use below. I'll use this in combination with pass-through keystone jacks to interface with the ethernet runs in my home to the equipment on the rack. So I just popped in the number of keystone pass-through jacks I thought I was going to need and then lined it up on the rack and screwed it into place. Below the keystone patch panel, I wanted to mount this basic gigabit switch for more devices in my home that don't need 2.5 gig, like a couple of smart TVs. This would only take up a part of the 1U space, so I decided to also try and fit this SEMA board on the same 1U panel. I think there may be individual mounts for these two devices online, but because I wanted them in the same space, I decided to try and design a custom mount for them inside of Fusion 360, again starting out with a blank cover panel and working from there. After printing the first version, the switch mount actually was sized basically perfectly and was very satisfying to put in and out of the mount, but the Zima board mount was definitely off as I wasn't able to install it as I intended. Version 2, I had the right idea but messed up one of the measurements making the clearance for the PCIe slot off, so finally in version 3 the Zima board fit how I wanted it to, so I loaded both of these devices into the mount starting with the switch then the Zima board. Once they were in, I could bring them to the rack and screw them in place, and with those in, we now had three of the eight units of space filled. The next two slots are going to be filled with two mini PCs. The first is going to be the HP Elite Desk from the $100 Minecraft server video, which I'm still messing around with the AMP game panel a bit. There was a mount I found that said it was compatible, but looking at the comments, I found someone claiming it wasn't actually going to be fully compatible, so I ended up editing it a tiny bit and printing it out. At first I thought this wasn't a great design because it took so much effort to install the PC into the mount, but then I realized no, I'm just doing it wrong and flipped the PC over which made it fit into the mount perfectly fine, and while I didn't use them, there's also room for set screws to keep the PC more securely in place. This mount is also nice because it gives you two keystone ports, one I'll use for networking and the other for HDMI. With the PC in and the keystone jacks installed, I just lined the mount onto the rack and screwed it into place. Below the Elite Desk is going to be a Lenovo ThinkCenter M720Q, which is one of those mini PCs that you can add an adapter to add a full 16x PCIe slot to it. I'm going to be using this mini PC to start to mess around with Proxmox on, and possibly in the future virtualize PFSense or OpenSense. There was a mount for this available which is very material efficient and still works really well. This one also has dual keystone jacks, which again can be used for whatever you want. For me, like with the Elite Desk, I'm going to use one for networking and one for HDMI. In the bottom slot, I actually don't have any device to add, so I'm just going to add this neat little drawer that I can keep tools, USB drives, or whatever else I want in it, and I'll make sure to link this down below as well. This drawer works out pretty well, and I felt it was a better use of the space than just a blank panel. So for the top two slots, I'm actually going to be using this 2U touchscreen LCD, also made by DeskPy. At $80, it's definitely not cheap, but it does open up some interesting possibilities. For right now, I'm just going to be using it for a monitor to quickly check on systems that aren't responding over the network or need some sort of direct interfacing. With that being said, I want to eventually have this display a dashboard with stats for each of the individual systems and important processes in my home lab, so if you guys have a recommended dashboard for or something like that, let me know in the comments below. Another use I saw was Jeff Kierling actually used one of these in combination with a Raspberry Pi as a smart home dashboard. I'm still not entirely sold on this rack mounted display, but let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. Once you factor in the monitor itself and an SBC to run it, it gets kind of expensive, and I think if you're just running a dashboard on it, an old cheap Android tablet with a custom mount might be able to do the same thing for a lot less money. So we now have everything installed in the rack, but I need to connect it all. This is going to be done with some patch cables, and getting the ethernet all hooked up was pretty easy. I actually drew out a diagram so I knew where to plug everything in. For power though, I still need to figure out a PDU. For right now, I have everything plugged into a power strip that's zip tied to a blank plate on the back of the rack, and I'll be plugging it into my big UPS on my networking shelf. I'm not sure if I'll switch this up much, as dedicated PDUs and UPSs that will fit in this form factor can get very pricey. Taking a step back, I think this build turned out looking great, and it's kind of amazing how much hardware you can cram in such a small space, which also creates the problem of cable management. Bringing the rack over to my shelf, I realized it wouldn't fit because apparently I can't measure. So for now, I had to remove the handles and in the future we'll probably adjust the shelves if I decide on going with this rack and set up long term. Hooking everything up wasn't too difficult, but I still need to go back and cable manage everything. It was an absolute mess, but again, I'm not entirely 
entirely sold on this setup just yet and may end up downsizing to a smaller rack like the 4U one, which I'll talk about in a second. With that done, the build is complete, but the video is far from over, as I still have a lot I want to show you and talk about. First is the rack itself. The DeskPy Rackmate is definitely high quality and very sturdy feeling, which may be worth it to many of you out there, but I can also see the $120 price point being viewed as a little high as well. Another thing is, for many people, a smaller 4U rack will probably work out fine. Even for me, if you take away the screen, the drawer, and set one of the mini PCs on top, all my stuff would fit in a 4U form factor like this. I think if you want a sturdy, well-built mini rack, the DeskPy Rackmate is a great option in my opinion, especially if you plan on using the included shelves and accessories. With that being said, if you have access to a 3D printer, you can actually print an entire rack itself. There are a number of options online. I ended up printing parts from this one right here to show you guys as an example, but if I had to do it over again, I'd probably use this one here, which is a modified version of the one I just showed. And with under a kilogram of filament, I printed a full rack worth of parts. This rack can be assembled with standard M6 nuts and bolts, or like me, you can actually print all the nuts and bolts needed. This is a modular system that's pretty interesting and not only can you expand it up and down, but also side to side, making the number of possible configurations basically endless. Now this 3D printed version is not nearly as sturdy as the aluminum rack mate, but if you have a 3D printer, this entire rack will likely cost less than $20 in materials, and unless you plan on moving it around, then it probably is structurally sound enough for a lot of people. This is also a good time to show a few other 10 inch rack mounts I found online that I thought were pretty cool. The first is this ITX motherboard mount, which you can have the board itself along with a dual slot half height PCIe card, which is pretty interesting. You will have to supply your own power button and front IO, but this opens up a lot of possibilities. One is running a full NAS on a mini rack. This ITX mount could be used in combination with this awesome hard drive cage, which I had to print out and try as its design is amazing and it's awesome the creator of it put it out for free. To put it together, you start by taking these SATA couplers and screw them to these mounting pieces, which are then mounted to the cage like this. The drive caddies have a swinging handle that's secured with a single screw, and hard drives are secured into the caddy with normal hard drive screws. With the handle swung out, you can slide the drive into the cage and press it in to connect it with the SAT adapter in the back, which will have SATA data and power cables pre-run to it. There's also this back piece which has a 120mm fan mount to hide some of the cables and direct airflow through the drives. This 3D printed system isn't quite as smooth as what you'd find on something like an off-the-shelf NAS, but for a free 3D printed design, it works pretty darn well in my opinion. Now I haven't figured out the problem of powering this whole setup or tested stuff like drive temps as I more just wanted to show off these designs and what's possible but if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing let me know in the comments below. Again all this stuff was printed on my Bamboo Labs X1C and shows there is a ton of applications for 3D printing even just in the networking and servo world. If you guys are interested in getting a 3D printer I can highly recommend Bamboo Labs who again is the sponsor of this video but I'd still be using their printers even if they weren't. I'll have links to the X1C, AMS system, and a few of their other printers down below, so make sure to check those out in the description. So yeah guys, I think it's time to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.